So when I got approached to talk about childhood from Creative Mornings, I was like, there's going to be a lot of professional people here. I should dress the part. <laughs> but then the child inside me was like, nah, Kermit the Frog. It's kind of cool. Hello. My name is Richard. People know me as Podgy Panda. I'm a full-time artist, a full-time designer, a full-time doodler, a full-time kid. Like any kid, I hate Brussels sprouts and doing my taxes. And today I thought I would talk to you about listening to your inner child and also the importance of diving in head first. So when I was a kid, this is me when I was five, I aspired to be an artist. Um, I could draw the S symbol really well. I still can today, but I very rarely bust it out for special occasions. <laughs> um, this is my fifth birthday, by the way. Um, as you can see, the style sense is pretty outrageous. So yes, when I was a kid, I really, really, really wanted to be a cartoonist. Like, really, 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 really wanted to be a cartoonist. I grew up reading a lot of Calvin and Hobbes, watching a lot of Muppet Babies, watching a lot of Ninja Turtles, but the movie kind of freaked me out. <laughs> so during high school, I didn't really do any art subjects. Um, I've gotten here, or as I remember at the time, I tried to be good at maths, and I'm not really good at maths. Um, oh, and I also put these kind of notes just so I don't lose the audience. For example, this one says, note to self, don't lose your audience's attention used to scratch distraction gifts like this cat. Because <laughs> everyone likes cats. So after high school, I went to um, Animation College of New Zealand, and um, I, I learned how to draw. And it was great, because all of high school, I didn't draw at all. Um, um, during my time, I, I, I was able to explore different styles, um, forge lifelong friendships. Pretty much just setting up the groundwork so the future me can be awesome. I'm very fortunate to be creative every day. Creators. Um, my art has taken me to London, Norway, Los Angeles. I, I just ate lots in LA. <laughs> this is chicken and waffles, by the way, from Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. It's where Snoop Dogg gets his chicken from. <laughs> Thought I'd point that out. Uh, San Diego. New York, Christchurch, and Calgary. So these are some of my clients that I've worked on um, over the years. Um, I've got Brotown, Misery, who has done a creative talk before. Um, Mediatonic, which is a games company in London. Uh, American Greetings, who do uh, greeting cards. And most recently, Makerbot in New York, who are a 3D printing company. Um, so when I graduated from animation school, I worked on this, this New Zealand show, Rotown. Um, provided me with invaluable industry experience. But the main thing that I learned was I, 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 I kind of wanted to create instead of not being told how to create. You know, working on like such a large show um, with other people's characters, it's, it's quite hard to do your own thing. Um, so this was quite valuable for me. I think I spent like two years working for Rotown. Um, during my time at Brotown, I was developing my own stuff. So this was done in 06. Um, and I was really just like exploring uh, my own style. Um, yeah, I like to draw, doodle a lot. Some pens, very Calvin hobbies. And coffee, yay. I started drinking lots of coffee when I started in animation. It's a very uh, tedious job. 
Um, so I started uh, developing my own style um, outside of working for other people, and the style just started to stick. Um, so I started exploring other mediums. Um, these are um, vinyl toys which you can paint on, um, and uh, they're just kind of like another challenge to, let's say, like a flat canvas. Um, this is five and a half inches tall, and um, I started to play around with dioramas. Um, I got really sore hands cutting these out, because, yeah, it's fine. I, these, I did these when I was younger, so it was more, yeah. Um, here's another figure which was done for a, um, a private client, and um, it turned out quite well. So here's a turnaround for it. Some more. So a lot of the things that I draw um, are quite nostalgic, as per se. Um, they're all based around my childhood. Um, this figure here is um, 18 inches tall. Um, so he's quite big and took me a good solid three months to do. Um, and uh, the client requested kind of like a heaven and hell kind of theme. And I thought, let's, let's do angels being jerks and uh, devils down there. So I've done custom shows all over the world. Um, uh, LA, New York, Sacramento, San Diego, London, Cardiff, Italy, and Australia. Um, so I pretty much just follow wherever, uh, wherever my art takes me. Um, so I thought I'd highlight some of the, uh, um, the places that I've been to uh, with my art. Um, Calgary. So uh, I got invited to do a solo show out in Calgary, and um, they, uh, there was a, a, a gallery out there. Um, and so I created these, these characters for them. Um, and I called them the, the geeks of nature, as opposed to freaks of nature. So we have Godzilla Greg, Betty Yeti, Christopher Kong, Livy Unicorn, Bigfoot Brian, and Nora Nawal. Um, so with these, I, I kind of uh, drew turnarounds and fleshed them out into characters, um, which I like. And again, they're all just based upon um, just kind of like nostalgic feelings. Like Bigfoot Brian there was really, really shy. I was a shy kid growing up. Um, so I created worlds for them to live in and um, interactions for them. Um, this one here is called The Last Sushi, where they're fighting over sushi. Um, and Godzilla Greg here has just had wasabi. Just kind of see. Um, oh, and he's got chopsticks up his nose. Um, so I kind of played on more popular iconic images of, let's say, like Christopher Kong over there. He's the uh, King Kong having his ice cream and blowing up planes. So the story behind God Godzilla Greg is he's an accountant um, in Tokyo. And uh, he's got fed up with his day job. So he's been kind of rolling around town. Um, so these are the photos from um, the gallery show. So it was a half gallery, half toy shop. And it kind of just fit in really well. Um, I did some live drawing as well in the window. The younger me. I'm really bad at painting live, as you can kind of see. Yeah. Uh, so a friend of mine also sculpted them into uh, 3D figures as well, um, which we had for the show. And that was the first time that I saw my characters in 3D. San Diego. So I try to go out to San Diego every now and then. Um, it has the largest Comic-Con convention out there uh, called San Diego Comic-Con. And it's a good way to kind of go out and just meet your fans um, who uh, are American-based. Um, and it's always very, very crazy. Um, I mean, when I go out there, I, I get to be a kid. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, just like one gigantic big playground. I also get to go out and meet my fans. So I have signing slots, and um, I just go out and um, meet and greet and sign things for fans. So most recently, uh, I did a two-year stint in London, um, which I came back uh, in August last year. And um, London's great. Um, I was able to kind of just 
refined, uh, re refined my art style even more, just being out in like a completely new area. Um, there's also a lot of bike signs everywhere. Um, one day I decided to go out to find them and, and ride. Um, it, it didn't start with this one, it started with the actual Barclays bike. Um, and it progressively got smaller and smaller. Um, yeah, that was quite an achievement because yeah, I'm really bad at balancing. But um, during my time in London, I was able to refine my drawing style even more. Um, and I, I started playing a lot more on pop culture characters, um, which are more nostalgic to me. For example, Calvin Hobbes and Toy Story 3. Um, so I did a whole series of these, and I called them the Daily Doodles. And um, they, did, they did pretty well. A lot of people liked them. And it was a really good way for me to kind of figure out how these characters are drawn. And... Um, uh, yeah, how, how best I could reinterpret them into my own style. Um, see some more, there's Totoro. This is a commission for someone who they just wanted to be a jerk to their cats. Yeah, so I went slightly mad and uh, started doodling um, a lot more. And um, this is Finn from Adventure Time, um, which I did for a uh, three-list competition for uh, they were running with Adventure Time. Um, it's a, a piece I did for a gallery in um, LA, and again, Alice in Wonderland, so it's very, very nostalgic. Um, so, so these are pieces I did for New York, and um, I decided it would be a, a good idea to try and cram as many nostalgic characters as possible into one piece. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of Care Bears and uh, Danger Mouse and Snorks. Um, it took a while. Like this, this also took a while as well. Um, so these are all pandas within pandas, within pandas, within pandas. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was just exploring a lot of different ways how I could um, rework uh, my current um, art style and uh, drawing on um, what I went through as a kid. Um, I also kept up with my sculpture work. Um, so this is called Octavian Really, Really Likes Pineapples. Um, as you can see, it's pineapple, it's pineapple butt, yeah. This one's called Boogers. <laughs> um, I, I worked on uh, some of my own sculpts as well. Um, I collaborated with a friend of mine and um, I made some um, panda um, explorers. Um, a little close up something. That's a monkey guy. He looks quite small in his suit. So during my time in London, I, I did a lot of uh, freelance work as well, um, mainly for game studios. This was done for a um, studio, uh, Mediatonic, um, who develop Xbox games. And um, I was brought on to kind of uh, work on their property called Foul Play. And I did some background work for them, um, and it was quite nice to be able to give, uh, be given like free reign, free reign to reinterpret my style in a commercial sense. I um, also did some work for them on a game called Flume, um, which is kind of like the Indiana Jones of fish. And this game, I can't remember what it's called, but it's kind of like a simulator uh, where you build these little rooms and uh, little animals populate the, the rooms. Um, so we have here, it's my favorite, this like little sushi guy, um, and this guy here just really likes shoes. So I I'm really excited to speak about uh, my project I did in Ibiza. Um, I did this at the beginning of last year, and I haven't been able to talk about it or show it until today. Um, so I got word from my client that it was OK. Um, so I got brought on to design um, murals for a house in Ibiza. Um, so there were two rooms, a kid's playroom and a mezzanine room. And they really wanted kind of like a nostalgic feel um, uh, to these rooms. Um, so this one here is uh, one of the shots for the playroom. And it is a, uh, like an Alice in Wonderland um, meets Snow White meets um, Little Red Riding Hood uh, theme. And we've also got the Tweedledee and Tweedledum as well. But because they're fat, they're just breaking the swing. Um, the other room here, this is the mezzanine room, so this one took a wee bit longer, um, is a kind of like a party, party uh, 
scene where you've got like Star Wars, uh, Toy Story, and um, the Avengers just all kind of like hanging out. Um, now with this, I I didn't actually go out to Ibiza to do any of this. I did them all in my flat in London. Um, so it was quite a lot of hard work. These are all digitally printed onto wallpaper and um, and put up onto the wall. Um, so I thought I'd go through uh, some of my steps that I did for this project. Um, so first of all, I draw a lot of blobs. There's quite a few of them. And then that gets refined, um, which gets checked off by the client. And then the client sent me some photos of the room, and I just digitally imposed them on just to kind of get a sense of scale. Um, and then from there, I split them up into A0 sheets, and then um, I sent them over to Ibiza, where the designer um, put them up for me, um, just so that I could see how, how it would fit and if there were any problems. Like We did run into problems like in the top, cor top left corner there, where the, the, uh, the slide didn't quite fit in. Um, so here's a finished digital piece for that work. And the same thing for the other side as well. This one was a little bit trickier because it had like weird bumps and corners. Um, and I didn't actually see any problems until I put them up and then I realized that for one, the light switch is like now here and <laughs> like the tree gets lost up there. So um, yeah, and here's the finished work. Um, so for the mezzanine room, we went through a few different concepts. Uh, this was one of the earlier ones, and it was kind of like a camping scene, which I really, really liked. Um, but that evolved into more of a, um, yeah, kind of, they, they wanted to incorporate the Ewok uh, tree houses. Um, so it went from this to this. And here are some of the characters. I, I really like my Hulk. He's 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 kind of cool. And some stormtroopers. So this room here was a lot more difficult to do because um, it was such an awkward shape, and it had to go up, had to go up on top of the ceiling as well. Um, so again, we printed them up on A0 sheets, and um, was put up onto the walls. I mean, did run into a few problems which I didn't anticipate. For example, top left-hand corner, there's a kind of like a a gap which um, I needed to readjust and like Mr. Akbar there is kind of squidged in the corner so he got moved around. And here's the final piece. So the main wall here uh, is about two meters wide um, and it's about 1.8 meters high. So trying to figure all this out in my studio slash bedroom in London um, was it took a while. It took about three months to complete this project, um, and it did take a bit of um, you know, back and forth. But uh, yeah, it's my favourite shot. So as you can see, I moved Mr. Akbar, so he's not squidged in the corner anymore. So where to from here? Um, we've got more solo shows. So um, the next one coming up is in Sacramento, in LA, which will be in August. Um, again, I'm going to be drawing on kind of like nostalgic cartoons um, that I enjoyed as a kid. And they have another one in uh, New York in 2015. What I've learned so far? Listening to my inner child seems to be working thus far. This whole diving in head first thing seems good. And being creative also means you can dictate your dress code. Um, also, keep drawing. That's another thing which, um, which I've learned to do as well. 50% um, drawing, 50% networking. Um, drawing only gets you so far, but if nobody can see it, then you know, you're, you're just kind of talking to a blank audience. Um, things like social media, it's great. I've been able to kind of uh, reach out and to show as many people of my stuff as possible. Be nice. Being mean gets you nowhere. And be nice. <laughs> and stay focused. Like this guy. <laughs> Yay, distraction gifts. Yay. Thank you for listening.